everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin, and today I'm bringing you another thoughts video. So today I'm going to be looking at the Holiday 2010 catalog. Though it isn't Christmas time anymore, I decided to take a look at this Holiday catalog since I didn't have any that were around the Lego Movies time, so I decided to look at something a little bit older than what I've recently been looking at. So 2010 is one of those years that's just, it just has a lot of very nice interesting stuff inside it, so let's take a look and see what's inside. So since this is a holiday catalog, you see that we have one of the Winter Village sets right there on the front. We open right up and then we can actually see those, which we have the Winter Toy Shop and then we have the Winter Village Bakery which these are two of the Winter Village sets. They did do a remake of the Winter Toy Shop. I don't remember if it was around this time or after it, but very nice to see those inside this catalog. We also have the launch of LEGO Universe, which is one of those online games. Pretty cool that that came out back in 2010. And then we do have a number of really cool and interesting themes. We have LEGO Harry Potter, LEGO City, LEGO Atlantis, LEGO Games, Hero Factory, and then we have LEGO Universe and then LEGO Star Wars which of course there are some more things that are mixed in to this catalog other than those themes so let's take a look and see what else is in here so we flip right open we have some of the older larger sets in here we have the medieval market village pretty nice set wish I can get that sometime but probably will never get it imperial flagship it's an okay set you know if I find it cheap I'd probably get it but otherwise I don't really care for it we have the Tower Bridge, which was new as of this time. I think that this is retiring soon, or already has. We have a lot of the modular buildings right here, which we have the Fire Brigade set right up here on the top. Really, really love how that actually looks. That's like just a beautiful modular building. I wish I could actually get it, but I probably will never get it. Same goes for the Grand Emporium set, which is just, it's just beautiful, these modular buildings that LEGO made back in the day. And, of course, they go for lots and lots of money on the aftermarket. Then we have the Shuttle Adventures, which is another hard-to-find set from 2010. Very nice. Really like that spaceship. I know that we're going to be getting some space-themed stuff in City this year, so you can look forward to that during the summer. We have the Taj Mahal, which they have remade since this version, and I'm probably never going to get that. We have LEGO Architecture right here, which we have the Empire State Building, the Seattle Space Needle, and the White House, which I think that's interesting that we actually have the White House. And then we have the Falling Water, and then we have the Solomon R. Druggenheim Museum, which I don't know if I said that right, but you know, some architecture stuff, not really what I'm interested in. Oh, there we go. We have the LEGO Harry Potter 2010 sets right here, which we have new the Quidditch match, which I actually own this set. I do have some pieces missing inside the set. Might do a review on it if people want to see it. We have Freeing Dobby, which I always want to actually get another one of those sets, since my older Dobby's face is losing its printing. Do want to get that set at a nice cheaper price. $10.99 for that set back in the day was really nice. Same for the Quidditch match, $19.99 for that. Just wonderful the prices on these older LEGO sets that they had back in the day. We also have the Burrow, which is another set that I own. I actually own all of the LEGO Harry Potter 2010 sets. That was also one of the first sets to contain Bellatrix Lestrange, which is pretty cool, and also Arthur and Molly Weasley. We can continue over here. We have the Hogwarts Express, which also gave us our first Luna Lovegood minifigure. Really awesome that we actually got that. And then we have Hagrid's Hut, which was $40 back in the day, which I actually own both of those sets. Very nice sets to actually have. And then, of course, we have the big Hogwarts Castle set right here, which this was just one of my favorite sets that LEGO made back in 2010. Though I don't really have any of the parts to it anymore since I used a lot of them inside my Hogwarts mock, I do plan on eventually disassembling that so then I can actually build this up and then give a review on it. And then I'm probably going to work on an even better Hogwarts mock than the one that I was just working on. We also have the LEGO Harry Potter Years 1-4 through 4 video game which is on Wii, Nintendo DS, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Windows, and PSP. We have magnets and keychains right here. We have keychains of Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and then we have the magnets of Dumbledore, Harry in his Quidditch outfit, and Hermione in her Hogwarts uniform. Really interesting that they showed these gear items inside the catalogs back in the day. I don't think they do that anymore. We also have a little building challenge for Harry Potter. You can also see how old this magazine is with some of the problems that we have inside the magazine. 
We move on to Lego City, which is always nice. We have the City House. I actually remember seeing that set back in the day. That's just, it, it's just something that I'd probably get if I ever saw it at a yard sale very cheap. We have the Passenger Plane, which is another nice little plane set right there for $40. Pretty cool that we get that big plane right there. And then we get the Public Transport Set, which includes some nice minifigures to get. Nice bit of bus right there. We have the airport, which for $100 you get that big plane and then you get this nice big airport area, which, you know, compared to the, the Sky Police stuff nowadays, it's just crazy based on the price per piece count and everything. It's just, it's just crazy. Like, you know, I'd definitely buy this for $100, but, but then nowadays we have smaller sets and they're like about the same price as this. I, 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 it's just annoying. We have the helicopter and limousine right there, which I actually really like that limousine. Pretty cool. We have some more city stuff. We have the train station, which is pretty cool. We have the tank truck, which is actually something that I, I actually don't know if I still have that. I might still have that. I don't know. Um, I actually owned that set back in the day. I might still have it. We have passenger train, which is another train. We have a cargo train. We have a lot of trains inside here, which is pretty cool. We have the level crossing, another construction set. Pretty cool that we got some construction stuff in here as well. City goes on for pages and pages, which is pretty cool with a lot of different sub-themes. We have the fire helicopter, sort of similar to something we have today. We have the repair truck right there, which I actually might own that set still. Might do a review if I can put it together. We have the fire boat, very nice. Don't know if that floats on water. Oh wait, yep, and it floats. It floats, that's cool. We have the fire station, which is pretty cool. Might have some pieces to that from a yard sale haul that I got, but I don't know if I actually have the full thing. We have the off-road fire truck and fire boat right there. Pretty nice boat as well. Now we get into Lego Kingdoms, which has a lot of very nice interesting sets as well. We have the Outpost Attack, we have the Prison Tower Rescue, the Prison Carriage Rescue. Unlike some of the previous castle or kingdom sets that we've gotten, these aren't as interesting as like the ones that we got back in the day. I do really love the original castle theme from like around 2008-ish. That's probably one of my favorite like castle-like themes. We get some keychains. I actually own the wizard set. I have the box for that inside my box collection as well. We have the king's castle, which is pretty cool. And then we get the small jester set, which I actually might have that one too. We have some of the under $10 sets, which it's just crazy that LEGO used to have actual sets that were like under like $10 price and then you get like a minifigure and like it, it's just very nice that they did that back in the day. I wish that they could actually do that now. Out of these sets, I do actually own that small car set, but I don't know where that is right now. And I also own the Manta Warrior, which is also a polybag version. I have the Penguin Keychain. All the other sets are pretty nice. I, you know, they're practically like polybag style sets right there, which I would get them if I could actually get them, but they're not available anymore, so I won't be able to get them, so yeah. Which I don't know if I actually got the LEGO City Advent Calendar in 2010, I don't remember, but you know, pretty cool. And then we have the 2011 US Calendar. I actually have that calendar, which is pretty funny. And then we have the LEGO Kingdoms Calendar, which I, I, I actually would have gotten that back in the day. Just It's just a very cool looking Advent Calendar because you get wizards and other types of things and not like city stuff since, you know, whatever. Then we move on to Lego Atlantis, which is another one of my favorite themes from back in the day. We have the Typhoon Turbo Sub, and then we have the Undersea Explorer. I actually own the Typhoon Turbo Sub set. We have the Atlantis Exploration HQ, which I own some bits and pieces of that. Might put that together and do a review on it. And then we have the Portal to Atlantis, which I actually don't remember if I actually own this set or not. I might actually have this, but I don't remember. We have the Deep Sea Striker, which I don't think I actually have that set. We move on to LEGO Toy Story, which has a lot of very interesting stuff in here as well. We have the Garbage Truck Getaway, which has the Twitch minifigure, which is Just Do Good's Sig Fig, which I think is funny. Which I actually own some bits and pieces to that set. I don't know where I have Lotso right now, but I know that I have the Jesse minifigure hanging around and I have bits and pieces of Twitch missing one of his ears, which is a little funny. We have the Trash Compactor Escape, which is another pretty cool set. Wish I got that back in the day. We have some keychains of Woody and Buzz. 
Also, another thing that I just want to mention is that we are going to be getting Toy Story 4 sets coming out in around April-ish. They are going to be 4 plus LEGO sets, meaning they're going to be junior sets. There is also a possibility of a rumored collectible minifigure series that might be either Disney or just a plain old Toy Story theme, which we still actually don't know how these minifigures are going to look. If they're going to be like the first Disney collectible minifigures and have normal heads and not the molded ones or whatnot's going to happen. We also have the magnet set right there with Buzz, Woody, and an alien right there. We have the Western Train Chase, which I actually own some bits and pieces from a yard sale haul. I also own Woody's legs from that. We have the Pizza Planet Truck Rescue, which I own that set. Might put that together for a review. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I have to find the cork for ham eventually. We have Duplo Cars right there, and we have Duplo Toy Story since Disney had something to do with Lego, I guess, back in the day, and Pixar as well. Nothing really interesting, nothing I would buy. We have some of the creative building stuff right here for Duplo, and then we have some of the bricks and more from Lego, which these are just random tubs of just bricks and stuff. We flip open again, we got Lego games right here, which we have the Magma Monster game right there, and then we have Wild Wool, and then we have Orient Bazaar right there, which those are some pretty nice looking sets. Probably never going to get any of those unless I find them at a yard sale. We have Harry Potter Hogwarts, which is one of the Harry Potter LEGO game sets. Of course, I actually own this set, but I probably won't do a review on it. I actually own this set twice, if you're wondering. We have Minotaurus, which I actually own two of this set as well, and I actually have another one that is actually still sealed inside my extras bin. Don't know what I'm going to do with that, though, but it includes a nice green base plate, so if you ever want a green base plate, that's can be found inside that set. We have Ramsey's Pyramid right here, which I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that comes with a nice base plate as well. We have Creationary, which I actually own the pieces from that, but that's mixed into my own collection. We have the Lava Dragon game, which I own, and then we have Pirate Code, which I own as well. Most of those pieces are sorted into my own collection, though. We have some great gift ideas right here, which we have some Space Police. We have the Lunar Limo right there, which is pretty cool that we have Space Police in here. We have Technic, which we have a regular helicopter, which is a two-in-one. We have a Power Miner set, one of my other favorite themes from back in the day. We have the Lava Traz right there, which includes this big orange rock monster, big fig right there. And also you get one of the orange ones and then two of the miners. Pretty cool. Wish I could get this set. 50 bucks for that. Pretty nice. We have Lego Racers. We have a Lamborghini right there. And then we have the Brick Street Getaway right there. We also have a little battle pack over here from Lego Kingdoms, which is the Dragon Knight battle pack. $14.99 for five minifigures is pretty nice, but wish it included a small build. I don't know if it actually does or not. We also have a little Lego stocking for $10. Pretty cool. We flip open one more time, we have some of the LEGO store and LEGO shop pages, which also, this is when back in the day the LEGO shop page looked different, and also the normal LEGO page looked different, which I, I just remember those back in the day, it's just pretty cool that they actually had it look like that. It's just a little nostalgic right there. And then we have some of the other information right there, if you want to order something. We have some Lego Creator, which these are the three-in-one. We have the Ferocious Creatures, which you can have a crocodile or a deep-sea fish or a dinosaur. We have the Off-Road Power right here, which is pretty cool. We have the Sonic Boom, which is a nice-looking jet right there. We have the Apple Tree House, which is a nice little house build right there. Pretty nice. We have Lego World Racers, which was a short-lived theme, which has which has Wreckage Road and Gator Swamp and Blizzard's Peak right there. Out of those, I actually own some bits and pieces from the Gator Swamp, and I own some bits and pieces from the Wreckage Road. We have the Desert of Destruction right there, which is one of the bigger sets from the theme. We have the Snake Canyon, which I own some bits and pieces from. And then the Jagged Jaws Reef right there, which I don't own. We continue on with Disney's Prince of Persia right here, which we have the Quest Against Time. And then we have the Fight for the Dagger. And then we have some of the keychains and the magnet sets right there for the theme. We continue on, we have the biggest set, which is the Battle of Almont, which I actually haven't seen this movie, so I don't really know anything about it. And then we have one of the other smaller sets, which is the Ostrich Race right there. 
flip open one more time, we have an advertisement for Design By Me, which I remembered that back in the day I used to actually use that and design some random stuff just for fun. We have some advertisements for the Legoland Parks and Legoland Discovery Centers, and then you also get a free ticket to Legoland if you're a kid. And then we have Hero Factory, which this is when we first got Hero Factory, some of the first original versions of some of these hero characters. I'm not going to say any of their names because I'm probably going to pronounce them wrong, but I actually own the Stormer one, and I own William Furno right there. The other ones I don't have, Mark Surge I actually have, I actually do also own that Furno bike set right there, which I think I actually have that. We continue on, we have the Von Nebula, which I remember actually having that back in the day. I have some bits and pieces from him, as well as Rotor. We have a lot of different characters right here. This was supposed to be Bionicle's replacement, but it didn't really work out, which sort of like the construction lines don't really work out with LEGO. I don't know why, but you know, they aren't as popular as they were back in the day. We have some of the Technic sets, which we have a motorbike, a snow groomer, and the container truck. Nothing too interesting. I don't really care for Technic. We have the mobile crane, which is another big $100 set right there. Very nice for $100. And then we have LEGO Universe, which this was a $40 game for the PC back in the day, which I actually owned this game. I didn't really play it very often, but I played it a little bit. But it's pretty cool to see that we have an advertisement for that. Now we move on to Star Wars, which has a lot of the sets that I actually owned back in the day. Really cool, a lot of the stuff that they had back in the day for LEGO Star Wars in 2010. We have the ARC-170 Starfighter, which I own that set, which includes Kit Fristo and R4P44 and Captain Jag and a clone pilot. Really cool set, I actually have to rebuild that sometime, pretty awesome. Then we have a Clone Wars Magnet set with Anakin, Ahsoka, and a Senate Commando. We have some other keychains and some other magnet sets. Pretty cool, a lot of nice stuff right there. We have the Clone Turbo Tank, which if you've watched my other haul video, you've seen that I actually have this set. It's just a little broken up. I gotta rebuild it. Maybe might do a review on it, I don't know. We have the two Battle Packs for 2010, which is the Rebel Trooper Battle Pack and the Snow Trooper Battle Pack. I own multiples of both of those battle packs, so I might do a review on them sometime. We flip open again, we have the Hoth Wampa Cave, which I own that set. Back in the day, 40 bucks for that, pretty cool. You get the Wampa, which was new for the theme back in the day, and then we also get nice Luke Skywalker, we get Zeb Siniska, and a skeleton. Then we have Slave One, which was the first remake since 2006, which was pretty cool which was also my first Boba Fett, and Boss Committee figure was brand new for this set as well, and then you get Han Solo and the new Carbonite piece as well. I bought this back in the day, 80 bucks for it, pretty nice. I know that we are going to be getting another Slave One this year, inside the April wave for the 20th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars. If you haven't seen that yet, you can check out my LEGO 2019 site down in the description below. Then we have the at, -AT Walker, which this is the 2010 version as well. I never actually got this one, the only walker that I actually got was the one that they produced the next time they made another at, -AT walker, which I actually prefer this one and the motorized one compared to the other one since these actually look really nice. And also the motorized one was one that I actually wanted back in the day because of the nostalgia reasons and all that stuff. We also have the MIDI scale Imperial Star Destroyer, which is for $40 right there. They also did a Millennium Falcon. Those didn't really work out the way LEGO wanted them to, so they stopped making them. Next, we have General Grievous' Starfighter, which includes a new version of General Grievous, also one of my first versions of General Grievous. And then you also get Nadar Veb right there, and the A4D droid, which is pretty cool. I actually still have the vehicle. I'm actually missing the General Grievous that came inside that set, but I do have another version of him. We have Cad Bane Speeder, which was one of those exclusive hard to find sets right there. I actually owned two of these back in the day. Might put one together and do a review on it sometime. We have Emperor Palpatine's shuttle, which I actually own, but I have to put that back together as well. We also get a damaged Anakin Skywalker in there, and it's also a very nice way to get the Emperor Palpatine minifigure as well as a new medical droid. And then we have Plu Koon's Jedi Starfighter, which was another cheap way to get the Jedi Master Plu Koon, and also you get his astromic droid inside his vehicle. Might do a review on that, I actually have that in my Clone Wars display upstairs. 
we have a lot of the giant LEGO Star Wars sets right here, which we have the Republic Dropship with AT-OT Walker for $250. Pretty cool, you get a, you get two nice Star Wars ships and a lot of clone troopers right there. This is a really cool set. I wish I actually got this back in the day. Same thing goes for the Imperial Shuttle, since this is just one of the top direct-to-consumer sets that was on my list back in the day, since they also still included the chrome-handled lightsabers back in the day inside those sets as well, which we have Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Stormtrooper, Imperial Officer, and a shuttle pilot inside this set. It just looks really cool. I wish I actually got this set. I did get the 2015 version, which isn't as good as this one, but this is definitely just a beautiful looking set. I wish I actually owned it. It's on my to get list. And then we have the original 2008 Death Star set for $400 before they decided to remake it and add another $100 to it, which I actually own this set as well. I own all of those characters. Some of them might be missing some pieces. And then finally, all the way on the bottom, we have the Tant of IV, which is rumored to be remade as another direct-to-consumer set this year, which I'm actually hoping so since I missed out on this set. 150 bucks for that. I would definitely pay that for this set right now. Really nice, but the new one should be around 200 And then that's pretty much it for the catalog. We have a little Lego universe and then a VIP stuff going on right here. Nothing else new on the catalog, so yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. That was just a crazy nostalgic drop right there with the Harry Potter and the Star Wars and all the Clone Wars stuff that they had back in the day. Star Wars The Clone Wars was one of my favorite sub-themes from LEGO Star Wars back in the day, and also it was very nice to see a little bit of Power Miners and also Toy Story, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching and me just rambling on about how I want this, how I don't want this, and whatever and all that stuff, so yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you next time. Bye!